In today's episode, I get to try out this, the Solval SV06. It's a direct drive, sub $300 printer with a high temperature capability. So I wanna see if it can print PETG for a project I have where I fix a fence. I'll explain it all on today's Film of Friday. This video is sponsored by Solval3D.com. This video is also brought to you by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. I installed this decorative fence in our backyard to contain our dog. They're really low cost panels you can get at Menards or Lowe's, anywhere. It's really easy to install. You pound the stake into the ground, slide the pole through the fence pieces into that stake, and you have a beautiful fence. There's also a gate available that you can install, but this is where I needed some help from 3D printing. You install the gate panels similar to a fence piece, but you have to line everything up perfectly, and even if you do, it can still sag like this. The brackets fit loosely around the pole, so these things can sag in both directions, and it also will hit the ground, so you need to lift this up a little bit. I decided to 3D print my own inserts to make this fit tighter, so I measured the pole, and that was just under 20 millimeters, and then the inside of the brackets was at 22 millimeters, so a lot of gap here. I recorded all the dimensions, and off I went to Tinkercad. Tinkercad.com is a free online CAD program that's really easy to use. I'll show you how I made one of these inserts. So I dragged the cylinder over, and I'm going to make it 25 millimeters in diameter. Then I'm going to lower this thing to 3 millimeters because it's going to form the lip of the insert. I need to round the sides so it makes it nice and round. And now I'm going to bring the platform, put it on top of this, and bring another cylinder in for the actual part that goes into the bracket. So this needs to be 22 millimeters in diameter so it fits tight. And I also want to make it 25 millimeters tall. And I also need to round this one so I'll do the sides to its max. Now I need to put a hole at the center of this thing, so I'm going to put the platform back where it was, bring in a whole cylinder, because this takes away material, and I'm going to make this 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters to match the pole, but I'm going to make it tall so it goes all the way through this thing. Now I'm going to move it over and then align all of these using the centering tool. So I'll grab them all, go up to the top, grab the centering tool, click on the X and the Y dots to center these things, and now I can actually group these together and make it into one piece. So I'll grab them all, and then I'll hit the group button, and just like that, I've made the insert. To lift the fence panels off the ground, I'm gonna change the bottom insert from three millimeter base to 30 millimeters base to lift it up. So now I can take these two files, export them as STL files, and print them. Full disclosure, Solval sent me this printer to try out on the channel for free. It's got some really nice features, and it's completely open source. It's direct drive, has an all-metal hot end, auto bed leveling, a PEI build plate, 32-bit board, dual Z-axis, and even adjusters to tighten the belts. Because of the high temperature hot end, this printer can print all kinds of materials, including PETG, that I want to use in this project. And you can get this printer direct from Solval for $249. I'll put a link to it in the description below. I wanted to use a filament that could handle a little higher temperature outside, and that's why I chose PETG. I have this PETG from Universal Composites Incorporated. Now it's purple. Normally I would use black for this, but I want it to show up in the video, so I'm going to use purple against the black fence. Now because this thing looks very similar to a Prusa MK3, I'm going to use the Prusa slicer and the Prusa MK3 profile to actually slice my prints. The first thing I did though is print a chep cube, and this thing came out really nice, so I was ready to just jump right into printing these inserts. So I put two of each on the bed, and I sliced it at a 0.3 millimeter draft, general PTG setting, the MK3 profile, with an infill of 25%. And other than that, I didn't change anything. I just sliced it, and it said it would take one hour and 35 minutes to print all four of these. And the results were really good. There's no stringing. This is a very clean set of prints. And dimensionally, spot on. They were 22 millimeters by design. They're almost perfectly there. This is the bottom one, and this is the top insert. So now I'm ready to put them in the fence. I slid the one with the larger offset into the bottom of the fence panel, and it fit nice and tight. The top one slid in the same way, so I got my dimensions right. Now I had to check the pole, and the pole fit in perfectly. So I slid that through, pushed the pole all the way into the stake, and then did the same for the other side, and it came out much straighter, as you can see. So the 3D prints did their job. If you have a fence like that or a friend that does and you want to print these, I'll put these up for free on things.com. Link in the description below.
This is my favorite thing about 3D printing, when you can design something that doesn't exist and fix something around the house. It's one of those life hacks. And the Solval SV06 did a great job printing PETG, and the dimensions are perfectly spot on. So I'm really happy with the results. I've got to do a lot more printing on this in the future. If you want to see more of this on the channel, let me know in the comments below. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, you can support me through Patreon.com or NowThangs.com. If nothing else, click on that Filament Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.